what is a National Historic Trail. I don't actually want to go there right now because we have some other stuff to cover, but pieces of it are going to come into the conversation throughout the rest of the day. I can feel that. What I want to do is now go to the decade. The decade happens to be 10 years that we're right in the middle of, 2008 to 2018. And the reason for this decade is in 2018, the National Trail System will celebrate its 50th anniversary as a federal action. It was a law was passed in, in 1968. Um, for any of you who've studied 20th century American history, that was a pivotal year. Vietnam War stuff was going on, the assassination of Martin Luther King, all kind of, when you go to, you know, like journalist museums, the museum, 68 is sort of this pivot year in the 1960s. And in the middle of that, somehow the Congress had the presence of mind and the votes to pass this act that we're trying to implement. Um, and so it's coming up for an anniversary in this whole decade of anniversaries of 60th, of 50th anniversary things that happened in the 60s. Um, so the partnership with some, some encouragement from people like me five, six years ago said, okay, we have this decade, just like the Park Service did Mission 66 back in 1956 to get ready for its 50th anniversary. How about we have a decade for the National Trails starting in 2008, sweeping up to 2018. And I have to say that on October 2nd, which was the actual day of the 40th anniversary in Washington, D.C., at the Smithsonian, Bridgie's husband, Bart Smith, who had just come home the night before from his last mile of National Scenic Trails that then existed from Yellowstone, flew into town, and we had a ceremony in the Smithsonian on that celebration day, and we had American Hiking Society and Pat Noonan from the Conservation Fund and various officials from our federal agencies gave some speeches. What I wish we'd done is to make a video of that, and all of you would have seen that ceremony, but that's never we happened. We do have a video of it. We do, but we've never gotten it out to anyone. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately. So anyway, we have this anniversary, 40th anniversary. The reason I was excited about the 40th, because I'm going to be retired when the 50th comes along. So if I'm going to help shape this, it's going to be now. So one of the things that came out of the 40th was this decade thing, 10 years. And I have to give a lot of credit to Gary. In fact, we should stand up. Over here. And, uh, but Gary thinking, and the partnerships board and support of the leadership council and everything, um, they cooked up a scheme that was not just a name, it wasn't just a decade, but it was some serious goals and some even more serious actions. At one point, I think we had 34 brainstormed actions that had been boiled down to a kind of a task, a top priority list of about um, 10. And so I want Gary to give you a flavor very quickly. And the reason is because goal two has to do with trail stewardship and completion, which is really underlying all the stuff we're talking about today. And so in the context of our discussion of large landscapes, one of the things we want to come back to in the afternoon is how can we better implement goal two through some of the things we talked about today. So give us something about the decade. Real quick. Well, actually, I'm going to go back earlier than the decade. Um, you, you do have in your packet this one-page uh, summary of this initiative called the Decade for the National Trail System. But <clears throat> What I wanted to start with, Steve, is actually reminding all of us that one of the really special aspects of the National Trail System Act in 1968 was, yes, to set up a system, or the potential of a system of national trails, but it wasn't a system of national places like wildlife refuges or like parks or like monuments in which it's the responsibility of a federal agency <clears throat> to administer and manage that heritage area, that, that piece of land or whatever or water for, for the citizens of the, of the United States. What I think is the really innovative and exciting aspect of the National Trail System Act is that it set up this system that was to be fundamentally and essentially a partnership, a collaborative effort between federal agencies, state agencies, local agencies, but just as importantly, private citizens working through nonprofit organizations, those of us represented in this room. We take that for granted, you know, because we're in the midst of it. But we really don't, I think, celebrate how 
really revolutionary or radical that approach is. And in fact, to me, whether it's the austerity of the, of the present or um, whatever you want to think of, to me, I think we are the future of stewardship of our heritage in the United States. Not just natural resources, not just cultural resources, not just uh, historic resources, but all of our heritage together, which calls upon the citizens of the country to, to appreciate all of these, what we've given, what, what, what you know, is our, is our heritage, what, what, what's our bounty, but also that we need to be taking care of it and enjoying it for now and passing it on to the future. And it's in that context that we are active participants in the stewardship of these resources. In fact, in the authority of the National Trail System Act, the federal agency managers and administrators <coughs> are given the authority and the encouragement by Congress to involve the nonprofit and citizen partners in virtually every aspect of doing the trails, which includes planning them, includes developing them, includes protecting them, includes maintaining them, includes telling the stories of them, all of it. So we are managers of the trails in many respects just as much as the agencies in which the, the, that may have the land base. In that context of involvement and of engagement of, of real partnership, yes, in the process of celebrating 40 years of success of this experiment, in 19, 19, uh, or 2008, we said, let's look to the future, the next 10 years, and challenge ourselves, set goals for uh, a decade for the national trail system, which Steve was mentioning, and which is outlined on, on this page. We came up with three goals, which I think of as a triangle, um, basically, you have, yes, you do. Markers on the table, too. Triangle because I see each of these three goals as mutually supporting. Goal one is all about um, awareness, increasing awareness of all citizens of the United States about this, her this part of our heritage of the country, and from awareness leading to in in interest in, in helping to be a part of this and, and pr protect and sustain it. Um, a second goal of one that he mentioned, which is mostly the focus of today, has to do with the on the ground, I'll, ca I'll call it protection, but it's all of the on the ground activities with the resources. And then the third goal, and I am purposely putting it down here, the third goal goes to that unique characteristic of the national trail system, that it's a collaboration between public agencies and private organizations. The third goal is about capacity of all of us to sustain these on-the-ground resources and to continue to tell the stories. The reason I see it as a triangle is because like a triangle, each one of these three goals helps support and is, is absolutely necessary for the others to, to succeed. If we don't have the money, the funding, and the staffing in the agencies to do the necessary work, the trails fall apart. If we don't, but equally so, if we don't have us as citizens of the country organized in collective and, and effective ways, to do the work and to prod and, if you will, politely at some times. Where is poke? Poke, <laughs> you know, the, the federal government and state government and the local government, the trails also fall apart. And obviously, if we don't have citizens of the country aware of and appreciative 
of these resources, we don't get the support we need in terms of 